Hello and welcome to Games on Lock. I'm Andrew Luftglass. Our show is about esports and video game culture at large. But we're not just interested in the big tournaments and the globally ranked players. Today, we're in the basement of a Donato's Pizza of all places. Hey everyone, I'm Marissa Contepelli here at Donato's in Columbus, Ohio. We're going to be checking out a bi-weekly fighting game tournament that's happening inside. So I think you guys should follow me on in and see what's going on. Today is one of our, our weeklies here in Columbus. We have like fight at the bit, but here at Donato's, uh, we basically have a melting pot of different communities. We have the Smash community in the back that I was previously a part of. Uh, we have Marvel, we have you know Dragon Ball over here in the corner. I brought Undernight. Um, so really it's just kind of a melting pot for casuals, uh, people bringing in their own setups to, to meet and play with everybody. Facebook uh, is the general uh, media source that we use for this community. Um, as far as like the anime community, a lot of us use Twitter. So I, I'd been talking to a lot of people on Twitter, uh, organized like a, a small Discord for Midwest uh, for Undernight, the specific game that I play. Uh, so. I give the shout out on Twitter, post on Facebook and things like that as well. I like the lively atmosphere that's here when people come to play their games. I like being invested in uh, seeing how people are doing out in various communities and their own tournaments. It's just pretty fun to me. I don't know, I, I like that we have community spaces like this, for sure. Because I'm from the Smash community, it started out as just a casual enjoyment of Super Smash Brothers because when I was growing up we had GameCubes and then Nintendo 64s and we just played the Nintendo games that we had. Those were the kid-friendly games that my parents were willing to get me. So when Super Smash Brothers came out, I played a lot of that with my close friends, my cousins, all my neighbors, stuff like that. And that that game just really stuck out. It was fun for me. When I came to college, I found out about the tournament scene that was here and I tried to get involved with it, but I actually came, I think, a week or so later than the major event for the year, so I just missed that. I made sure not to miss it the following year. I would say the biggest, the biggest form of advertisement that I use is definitely word of mouth. If I run an event in January and it's a successful event, the let's say 100 people that come to this event, they all really enjoy this event, they all have a good time. They go home, they tell their friends that also play the game with them, they say, hey, this is guy in Columbus that's running events, he runs events really well, he's running another one in June. Let's go to this one in June, let's make the trip back. I use word of mouth as a system to make sure my tournaments are worthwhile, they're worth coming to, they're, people want to come back. In addition to that, I do use social media a lot. I actually just made a Twitter account exclusively to advertise for tournaments and stuff like that that I run. I have Facebook accounts that I use. I am in so many different groups. Uh, I can't count how many groups I'm in that are just related Smash groups that are nearby in Indiana, Michigan, all different parts of Ohio, uh, Kentucky, West Virginia, etc. The list goes on. To be able to just have a day off or um, request time off work to come to one of these events, it means everything to me. Even if I'm not doing that well, it's good to come see people I'm friendly with meet new people, talk about the games, just meet people that have the same interests as me, it means everything to me. Asking questions, asking people what am I doing wrong here, why don't I just get hit? Having people practically spoon feed me information because I'm a solo learner on my own, but I learn so much from other people. That's what the best part is about the fighting game community. So many people are willing to help you learn and improve yourself, because it's really hard on your own. There is um, a select few that can do it on their own, but most people I would say they don't do it that well. But that's why the community is great. I just hope that people improve in our accepting of uh, change in the fighting game community. And I just hope that more people try out more niche games like Undernight and explain their horizons. So just growth is what I would like to see. For me, I quit playing video games for about 12 years and I randomly saw EVO 2015 uh, in July. So Marvel vs. Capcom for Dreamcast was a fighting game I played for a bit. And after I saw that, I didn't even realize they had a third one out. I knew there was a second one. And when I saw that, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And randomly, I came across a post, Travis Case, who's kind of like the dawn of Marvel 3 here in Columbus. I saw he had posted a picture of the meetup for Marvel 3, and I reached out to him. 
And as luck would have it, that was like the one big night for Marvel 3. So I showed up for that and I've pretty much been here ever since. Right now, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is the newest one for the Marvel vs. Capcom series. So we've definitely got a lot of choices here for like versus style fighters. So just being able to continue to show up and help further the Marvel vs. Capcom team in Columbus, I think that's good. Um, People know it's here every Tuesday. It's not going anywhere unless they kick us out or this place closes. So having that consistency is really helpful. The Dragon Ball series, it's really popular. So I think it has a lot of potential to bring in players who may not necessarily like play fighters or who may come from other fighters. So we'll see how it goes. It'll be really interesting. It's been bringing in a lot of numbers, so it should be exciting. My favorite game, probably Smash, but that's because I play it the most. But um, I mean, I try and diversify myself and dabble into as many games as I can. But Smash, I played that like when I was younger with my brothers and sisters. So that's when I heard like, oh, people play this game and try and make money off of it. That's something I want to try. So I looked into it and sure enough, right across the street, they have tournaments. So now I'm here on a weekly basis. For my home, the nearest event was 30 minutes. So it was a 30 minute drive. And uh, my parents, wouldn't want to make that drive so for me to go play video games. And especially since like then I wasn't as good as I am now, so I wasn't making money either. So it was just a waste of gas money for them at least. But I was having fun regardless. So like whenever I could, I'd find rides with like my friends that were going. But um, this being that it's like right across the street, it's just so much easier. And then I started coming here, making a ton of friends and whatnot. And um, yeah, I feel like a real big part of the community. Here. So it's just great. It started off just me and my friends, like, friends uh, whenever they would come over and then like my brothers and sisters like we'd just play smash as like you know casually so we weren't like taking it seriously or entering tournaments or anything but um i think it was at school like in high school maybe i heard from a friend that like oh yeah there's this tournament happening at our community college you should come out and try and i was like i mean i don't play the game that seriously but i guess it'll be fun and then i did and i was like oh you know, when I play with my brother and sister, we play with items, so like a lot of wacky stuff happened all the time, but like this was super serious, items turned off, you know, there was time limits and strategies that you had to think about, and I was like, thinking about the game this much more just makes it that much more fun to play. So I had a lot of fun doing that, and then I was like, yeah, I should keep doing this. So I tried as hard as I could to make it out to whatever I could. Well, that's a wrap for this week's fighting game tournament in Columbus, Ohio. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Marissa Consipelli. Thanks, Marissa. Now let's head to the Barley House in Akron, Ohio, and talk to some players and some tournament organizers from Outer Haven. Today, we're currently at Reflex New Age, presented by Outer Haven Esports. It is a fighting game monthly that we host for the community. Uh, we do it as a way to pretty much connect with community members and also pretty much, you know, give the community a face to the name. We kind of got into the FGC by accident. Um, our initial goal as Outer Haven, before it was Outer Haven Esports, was to open up a gaming lounge. Um, when I was growing up in the city of Cleveland, I grew up in a very bad neighborhood. There wasn't a lot of places, not, not a lot of places for us to go. Uh, we had the library, boy, boys and girls club, but my mom wouldn't let us go out in the street because she worked late hours as a single mother, so most of the time we were stuck inside with my brothers playing video games. Um, so in order to pretty much get Outer Haven's name out there, we started hosting community gaming events. These events were pretty much to reach out to the community and like I said, uh, you know, put a face to Outer Haven, reach out and essentially build up a customer base. Um, so we did gaming community events, pretty much we had multiple, multiple uh, multiplayer games and we just free it open to the public, just show up, play games, meet new people and we, we would meet new gamers and introduce ourselves and get to know them, who they are, and what they want to see from us, you know, as, you know, an organization. Um, we believe in customer service is really high key, so a lot of players were asking for tournaments, mostly fighting game tournaments. So we decided to do a Smash Brothers Street Fighter V tournament, and that was our very first tournament held in April 2017? Yes, tw April 2017, and that was our very first tournament. We had 50 people show up for Street Fighter V and a few for Smash Brothers, but after that event, we realized that this is what we needed to do in order to engage the community more and build up the foundation. And from there on out, we became FGC event organizers and esports event organizers from there. Right now, it's just strictly social media and word of mouth. 
Um, we do have you know friend referral program right now, so if you bring somebody who's never been to our event, you get five dollars off your venue fee. Um, we're doing a social media promotion actually through one of uh, the events that we're um, promoting, um, that we're actually sponsoring. Uh, where if you like and share our Facebook page, you'll actually get money off of the entry fee for the cost, uh, smash event. Um, so we're kind of networking with a couple other TOs and just really spreading the word through social media. So we're on uh, Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, Twitch, all that good stuff. Um, but the majority of it does come from word of mouth. Uh, it comes from player to player because, uh, you know, when you hear about a TO, you don't really know it until you've been there or somebody that you trust knows that they've been around and they know what they're doing. Personally, it means a lot. Um, video games growing up for me uh, is, was a way that I bonded with my father. Uh, it was kind of, you know, we got moved from one parent to another, you know, I hadn't seen him that much. Uh, so it was just a really good uh, bonding skill that I had, uh, you know, getting in touch with my dad. Um, but I see how strong it creates these bonds between the people of the community. And I mean, I'm friend Facebook friends with most of you guys, so <laughs> um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And you create these, these relationships and we're gonna have them for years. And, and one thing that we've heard uh, when we first started this was that TOs come and go, especially in Ohio. And we don't want that. I can't see us quitting on you guys. And I don't see you quitting on us. So I can see us doing this for years to come and still having fun with it. And um, you know, even if a lot of the players don't go pro, it's okay because they still come to the tournaments and have a great time. Even if some of our players do go pro, it's okay because they still want to come to our monthlies and still hang out and still have a good time. Uh, so it's just growing into a family more than anything. It started with just a bunch of friends hanging out in, in a living room thinking, you know, we love video games. What can we do to really just open that door wider? Because here in Ohio, it feels like if you don't know about the FGC or anything like that, you, you almost feel you're in a state of desolate. And it, it kind of just pushed us to really try out PC gaming and things like that. So we would meet in a garage or in a basement and, you know, try as hard as we could to get individuals to play things like League, Overwatch, things of that nature. Um, and it wasn't until I'd say about six months later we really found our true footing in fighting games with the FGC in Cleveland and Columbus. Always wanting to go to events like this but never having a chance or knowing of any that were going around in my local area. With, with Outer Haven it's, it's, always, it's always a warming thing when you find somebody that's new so that you can see how their, their eyes light up from you know going to their first events because say they're out in the boonies or things like that, so they can't really get access to things of that nature. Um, I'd say it, it brings a general warmth to my heart to be able to provide this and really be able to push forward on something that I, along with everybody else on the Honor Haven staff, has a true passion for, which is games, community, and just having a great time. When I was still in the Army, uh, I ran into a couple of DSC guys online in Ultra Street Fighter 4 and um, I just started seeing them and, and I don't know, I'd like, like they told me to do some research, there might be some tournaments and I found a tournament, hit my first tournament in 2013, so uh, not so much experience but you know, it, you know I got bodied but it was, it was fun, I was just like wow, all the training that I'm doing, you know, like I have a, have a good, I got a lot of training partners and you know, and I focus on my faults, faults. but it, ma it, it makes me feel good and still humble because there's, no matter what there's always someone better so I don't let it get to my head but I try to keep a balance between confidence and reality. Watching my first tournament which was Evolution 2011 my friend was telling me about it on Sunday it was around top eight or so uh, I tuned in with him and I was watching it um, it was around I think Coco versus Latif was around there and I was watching it with it, I was getting excited watching these players and these, you know, characters I was playing clash out. You know, I was, I was nerding out. Um, and then ever since then, I told him, hey, if you know any tournaments here that's happening in Cleveland, let me know. And then ever since then, he told me about console combat, which was 
the Cleveland, it was like, you know, the Outer Haven of the past, you know. Um, that was the Cleveland tournament, and I would go there every month and practice. I was watching Filipino champ playing dolls in a tournament, I forgot which one it was, and just watching him play that character, it got me really interested of how his zoning works. So I decided to pick up dolls in training mode, you know, press out some buttons, try some little mix-ups here and there. I put him into rank, fighting against different people. And I said, you know what, this is pretty fun. I'm, it's pretty fun frustrating these people. Because you can tell they are frustrated. So ever since then, I just stuck with Dawson. I have two thumbs like the rest of these losers. So, and a brain. So I too can get good at a video game. Like, I don't understand what that, that weird stereotype. You have those people that are literally like disgusted at the fact that a woman can actually be good at a video game. We already smart. I don't know, I don't know why, why it's a big deal that we can actually look at a screen and press buttons too. Everybody in my family are actually gamers. Mom, from like my mom all the way down to my little sister. Um, I, I didn't know that something like this would be a thing, you know, FGC, you know, it's something esports for gaming. I just personally enjoy playing games. Tekken is my favorite uh, game at, uh, overall because it was the first like fighting game I ever played as like a child. I played Tekken 3 and my main at the time, like I always played Zhao Yu and that was the first time I ever beat like my uncle. So Tekken it is, like it, I was natural or something. <laughs> I grew up, like I said, I grew up with my pops, like we watched so many, we just got like this huge, almost infinite stack of like old school kung fu movies. And we used to just watch them day in and day out, like over the weekends. And so when you watch that many, like when you're into martial arts films like that, you start to see like the, where the inspirations come from for those games, like Bruce Lee uh, for, uh, you know, uh, martial law or uh, just law. And then um, it's kind of like a mixture of Jet Li and Jackie Chan for Lei Wu Long. And then, um, and it's kind of like, it's like you play those characters, like you know, okay, that's Law, and it's like that's Lei Wu Long, but it's like in, in, like in the back of your head, it's like this is Bruce Lee. Like even in Street Fighter, you got Fei Long, who is like based off of Bruce Lee. So you got all these like type of like arch type like uh, like characters who were based off of like real life inspirations. Like a lot of boxers and fighting games, are, like based off of like Mike Tyson, like like uh, like Balrog and Street Fighter. So I think it's heavily related in. It just fuels that kind of like that kind of culture and it kind of ties in with one another. And like when you grow with it, it's like you can play your favorite, your, your favorite like movie star actor from a martial arts movie in a game. And um, some people do that and you know, it's just, it's just pretty awesome to see something like that when it evolves, like when you just seen it as a childhood and then it just sticks with you in the game when you didn't even think it would. The Outer Haven events, it's a second home to me. Um, the FGC, this is something I've been into just about, um, not my entire life, but just I've been into fighting games my entire life and then I just got into the FGC like around 2012. So the fact that in my own hometown I can have quality events, see friends and family that I can travel with or that I have traveled with in the past and even currently like every month or every so often, like it, it fills my heart with, like love and joy. and. Um, it just helps when you got people that that close to you that just that shares that same passion and fire for competing and you want to you know go to you, you both want to win and you both want to go far so it's just this is the best thing for Cleveland players right now now that we've shown you behind the scenes let's check out some of the action Outer Haven seems to be uh, really for the community and trying to do a lot for your, your community when it comes to the, to, uh, the FGC and that's uh, that's wonderful that's fantastic yeah, All right, the, uh... it looks like we might be heading into the next match here. I knew they were doing raffles, but now, yep, I, I think we're heading into Silvezio versus Otter. <sighs> My heart's already pumping. It's already getting really fast. I get, I shouldn't get nervous because I, I just shouldn't, but I do. Otter's right. recently switched his team up too, right? He picked up yep. the Super Saiyan Goku. Yep. Uh, now he's got Gohan. I thought it was Cell. Uh, his first team was Ginyu, Ginyu, Frieza, and Vanilla Goku, or Super Saiyan Goku. Okay. And so then um, he swapped it to his current team. He just really loved 
how a go uh, adult Gohan plays. So he's just all like, Ginyu's got to go. And then he needed a really solid assist. So um, he picked up Gohan. So Silvezio is just coming out of the gate hot, just really hammering it. Yep. In Silvezio style, too. A little high for the safe jump option, but I mean, you know what? That's actually really creative using the uh, lightning legs to back up in your tree with no options of like, having anything come in. Yep, so he says, get Gohan back in here. <laughs> Otter really needs to kind of tighten it up here. I think he's just a little bit overwhelmed by the aggressiveness of Silvezio. Yep, and that was a quick first character. That was good damage, too, using the uppercut to chop down on the scaling of the damage of the combo. Oh, again. he would have been a little bit quicker. Oh, see the reflect. Knows. That's the other thing. I've seen Sylvester just slay Android 16 all night. He yep. knows the holes in the block pressure. He knows the floating yep. guard. I mean, every time I've seen him just get out of it. That nice block stream. Let's go. This is going to be all real stuff. He's burning the meter. Yep. Down on the ground. He cannot do anything. So he reflect. waits. That was really smart on his part, too. He just waited. Oh, he got caught by the Vegeta, so that's a dead 16. And did you notice how Silvezio used the enhanced uh, down back uh, medium mm -hmm. to go past him? Call his uh, Vegeta assist. Yep, to cross him up. Fell, yeah, he fell on the other side. That's so smart. Yep, and there it is. Dashed over to the other side. It's going to be a pretty clean set for Silvezio. Or round, I should say, game. Goodness, the movement. This, this dude's just, like, aggression all right. over the place. Yeah. And Otter is just struggling to keep up. But if there's one thing I'll, I'll give Otter, his ability to adapt. He yep. always seems to be able to come up with something up his sleeve, so. No, that was a very convincing first game. I can see Otter coming back slowly but surely. Yep, he just has to adjust. Yeah, yep. right there. He knows. He said, no, it's my turn now. Cover it with a standing heavy. He beat the six. Oh, reversed. Yeah, that's a little too high. Caught him on that low. This this magic series at the end has done so much damage too. He's always maxing out, I think, like four stories in the combo around. So that's so smart. Yeah, just non-stop. Uh, that's a dead Gohan, probably. Oh, he doesn't have meter, but no, he yeah, meter. But he yeah. doesn't need it. All right, neutral Android 16 goes for the heavy, covered by Goku Sith, but just gets jumped right over time. He's going to carry him to the corner. We're going to see some more step play. Yep. Wait for a second. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's smart. The level three, it's always going to get beaten by Gohan just like that. It's an aerial move. Yep. So you can't grab it. It's oh. already active frame one, and it's going to be hitting him no matter what he is. Yeah, Otter can't figure out when it's his turn. He uh, just got snuffed on the clash in the air. So he's going to run out the sparking right now with level three. And he's going to get a safe jump uh, attempt off of it, but goes to the low. More blocks. Good block. So. Empties. Good block on Otter. Mash and low, and then he gets caught into, su into level three, Super Saiyan three. Gonna be a hard knockdown. He's going to reflect. Okay, Good he did. Good cross up. That's the thing. He, it seems like silvezi has got to beat on when to hit button speed against Otter. Yeah, he's just very good at knowing. Four for four on those. Yeah, Magic Series, the perfect attack lead for level three again. No sparking on Otter's end. Character economy down. Mm, he waited. He got the hard knockdown, yep. Oh man, just too early with the dash and attempt gets covered by uh, Kamehameha Wave. Okay. And this is going to be ambiguous. Box dashes. Yeah, that's, yeah. Down. Mash and low, you get picked up. Okay. So, still not quite enough to catch him, but he swaps out just to be safe with a little foot and it's caught him with that little back. jab. He loves to mash that low when he gets a hard knock down. Thanks to our friends in Columbus, at the Barley House in Akron, and to the folks at Outer Haven.
For Marissa and our show producer, Earl Carlton, I'm Andrew Luckglass. We'll see you next time on Games Online.